In this tutorial, we will learn to design Sepic Converter Proteus simulation. Let's begin with the introduction of Sepic Converter. The Sepic Converter is a configuration where the voltage output can be above or below the input voltage. In fact, in this particular design both boost and buck converter do coexist. This is a circuit diagram of Sepic Converter. The output of the Sepic Converter is controlled by the duty cycle of the control switch, such as MOSFET. If the duty cycle is less than 50%, then the circuit will behave as a buck converter. It will work as a boost converter, if the duty cycle is above to 50%. A SEPIC is essentially a boost converter, followed by an inverted buck boost converter, therefore it is similar to a traditional buck boost converter, but has advantages of having non-inverted output, that is the output has the same voltage polarity as the input, SEPICs are useful in applications, in which a battery voltage can be above and below, that of the regulator's intended output. For example, a single lithium-ion battery, typically discharges from 4.2 volts to 3 volts, if other components require 3.3 volts, then the SEPIC would be effective. With the shown component values in the circuit diagram, the converter works by ensuring a continuous current through the inductors, for this reason it's known as continuous mode. By reducing the inductor value, the converter will move to the discontinuous mode. The voltage output of SEPIC converter can be calculated by using this formula. In order to get duty cycle, we can rewrite this equation like his, whereas D is duty cycle, V out is a output voltage, and V in is a input voltage. But we also need to add losses of switching device. Let's say switching device loss is 0.7 volts. Then, we can write this formula like this, for this example, we want to convert 12 volts input, into 5 volts output. We can find the duty cycle value, by using this formula, by putting input voltage, and output voltage values, after putting these values, we get 0.33. That means we need almost 33% duty cycle to get output voltage of 5 volts from 12 volts input. In other words, if we provide a 33% duty cycle to MOSFET, the output voltage will be about 5 volts. Because duty cycle is less than 50%, hence, circuit will behave be like a buck converter. Similarly, if we apply duty cycle more than 50%, output voltage will be greater than input voltage, and circuit will behave like a boost converter. For this example, we want to convert 12 volts input, into 16 volts output. We can find the duty cycle value by using this formula by putting input voltage and output voltage value, after putting these values, we get 0.58. That means we need almost 58% duty cycle to get output voltage of 16 volts from 12 volts input. In other words, if we provide a 58% duty cycle to MOSFET, the output voltage will be about 16 volts. Because duty cycle is greater than 50%, hence, circuit will behave be like a boost converter. To provide pulse width modulation signal to MOSFET, we used a PWM generator signal of Proteus. Now place all components in the Proteus window and make a connection according to the circuit diagram. Now let's see Proteus simulation of SEPIC converter in buck mode. For that, open PWM signal and make setting of duty cycle equal to 33%. Also set other values as shown in PWM window. Connect digital DC voltmeter across output load. After that, click on Proteus Simulation Play button. As you can see, the output voltage is about 5 volts. Now let's see Proteus Simulation of SEPIC Converter in Boost Mode. For that, open PWM signal, and make setting of duty cycle equal to 58%. Also set other values as shown in PWM window. After that, click on Proteus Simulation Play button. As you can see, the output voltage is about 5 volts. We can also see waveform of output voltage in Proteus, by using analog graphs. Now let's see output voltage, output current waveforms, using analog graphs. For that we need voltage probe. From sidebar select probe mode, 
Connect Output Voltage Probe on Output Voltage Node. Now add analog graph to check waveforms of output voltage. After that attach voltage probe to the analog graph. In order to check output voltage waveform, right click on graph, and make starting and end time settings. Set low time limit, because higher time will take, higher time for the simulation to complete. After that simulate the graph. As you can see from the graph, output voltage first shoots up, but after some time settles to 16 volts output. Not that, while designing buck converter practically, we can remove these starting output voltage fluctuations by using a PID controller. Thanks for watching this video, please share and subscribe to this channel, for more videos. See you with next video soon.